Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about uh, how to query data from Sitecore uh, using Lucene or, or the, basically the Content Search API, um, which is either going to be Lucene, Solar, or you could theoretically uh, use um, Covio, but that would be a, a different search provider, obviously. Um, so to get started, my example is going to be listings. Uh, this is a non-Helix demo, um, but I will eventually do a Helix version of this as well. But uh, that would be a slightly different, but this, a lot of the same principles will be in that one as well. So uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to do what I'm going to do is a article um, listing component. So I'm going to pull all the articles from a certain part of the content tree. Um, you could do this uh, using fast query or or psycho query. However, obviously, if you've never done that before, I highly recommend not doing that um, just because uh, the performance loss that you would have doing that type of query versus a Lucene query. Um, there are some, some things that can be problematic with using Lucene. You have to make sure you're, uh, or Lucene or one of the other search providers is that you'd have to make sure your uh, indexes are always built, um, which shouldn't be an issue, um, but it's just something to note. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend I'm just pulling the data, like I said, um, but I'm going to do this by uh, pulling data. You know, I'm going to be using Lucene in this example, but you could use Solar or you could use Covio as well. So to get started, what I wanted to do is I have my existing solution. It's got Glass installed from my previous tutorials I've done on Glass and some of the other uh, things related to models. So I'm not going to, I'm kind of build on upon that knowledge. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new repository. And this is typically where I put my data access. Um, data access being I'm accessing Sitecore. So um, I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call it Article Repository. Now, typically, what you'd want to do is maybe create an interface because uh, this is not truly a repository pattern um, by doing just a concrete implementation of Article Repository. But um, if, if we were building this out from scratch, we, we might have an iArticle repository, which is basically an interface of this article repository that would have um, you know interfaces that represent the... Uh, uh, these methods that we're going to create. Um, and then we'd have an article repository that inherits from the I article repository that just um, uh, adds some concrete implementations to that. Um, all that being said, that would allow you to have uh, testability of this article, repos article repository. You can mock it or you could uh, fake it or whatever, you, whatever testing method, methodologies that you have. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new method and I'm going to return an iEnumerable of iArticle. And I'm just going to say get articles. Um, we could go into a little bit more detail what it should be, but um, I'm just going to use that as an example. So I'm going to have an inherit from you or have, and declare a using statement for our article and then get articles is that. Um, so uh, to access this data, um, there is a few different ways to do this. Um, uh, to start out is I'm just going to um, do using our context equals site for content search dot content search manager dot create search context and then that's not going to resolve so we have to control period I don't have that installed on this in this instance so what I'm going to do is go add reference and I'm going to browse that's not what I'm looking for. One second. 
libraries, and then I want the content search. Let's just pull a couple of these. I don't know which one I need. So I'll just pull them all. And now it's working and it's saying I don't have a research. Uh, I probably just need to specify. So to do that, um, there's there's a few different ways I could have wrote this. I could, if you have a specific index already in mind, such as the web index, where you want to specify the specific index you want to pull from, you can actually uh, do a, and this is all on my blog, by the way. I'm just kind of rehashing stuff that's already on my blog. But I always think that it's better to have um, videos of, con uh, of topics that route over um, so search manager dot get index get index and you just specify a string index or you specify a specific index you've already gotten as well uh, but string index so that that would be site core underscore web underscore index for example would pull in that index um, obviously if you don't know which index you're going to be pulling from it could be master it could be web depending on uh, what where your code base is at um, it's better to use what I'm about to use, which is uh, new site core uh, content search dot site core indexable item. And then I would say site core context item. So the current context item, get its indexable item, and then I'm missing a closing here. There you go. So now we are able to use context. This is a lot like any, any framework if you've ever used it. Uh, now we can run uh, kind of um, Lambda to um, Lucene queries on this or link to Lucene queries. Um, not everything is supported, I will point out, but um, yeah. So by default, there is two types of models that I, I keep in mind when you're doing a search with a scene. There's the actual output that you want, iArticle, um, which we'll cover here in a second. But then there's also the searched item or the search searchable item. Um, by default, that is going to be, so if I do var query context.get queryable. And by default, that's going to be the search result item, which is a site core uh, search item and it just has the basic fields of like name and things like that so if we go to uh, definition real quick you'll see that has you know uh, basic information database name template name template id paths name language etc but what you might find is that you might come into a scenario where you need to actually search Lucene based upon other fields, not just the default field. So um, typically what I'll do to handle this is I'll create something called a search uh, model. And I'll just call it search. And typically I will actually inherit, the first one will just kind of inherit from Um, and all it will do is inherit from this. Um, not that. And it will be a public method or a public class. And there's nothing to it. I'm not going to do anything to it. But then I would also have another one called article search item. And in this, I will inherit from that base that we just created. And then I also want to query some other fields. So let's let's uh, take a look at Sitecore real quick. And I'll go over the content editor. And I'll just take a look at what the fields we have for article. If I go to an example, pages, uh, it's not there, article. 
and we have title, summary, body content, contributors. Uh, contributors are pulling from a multi-list. This might actually be a good field to use. Let me check real quick. Yeah, so um, let's pull contributors. And contributors will be a multi-list. So it's actually going to be an innumerable, innumerable of goods or IDs, however you want to do that. I, I'll just use goods for now for testability's sake. But so you'll have a public innumerable of good. And I'm going to say just contributors. So this sounds great, but how do I map this index field to a actual Sitecore field in a template? So to do that, I actually have to specify index field and then I just specify what that index field's value is. Uh, typically an index field is going to just be the name of the field, uh, the template name for it, and it's just going to be lowercase. So, but you can always use Luke or uh, Luke.net or Luke, the regular version, to just see what is the actual name of the field for a column. Um, and then you can just use that there. I will at some point do a video session on Luke and how to investigate your Lucene index. But for now, that's that's just a quick way to find out what it is. Um, it's, it's also really easy to find it if you've created some sort of computed field for your index or your index field. Uh, if you've done that, uh, it's really easy to know what it's called because you've specified what you want it to be called. So I have contributors and now I should be able to actually use that by just changing this con this, uh, this parameter I passed in. <laughs> and just use that. Um, so I can use article search item instead. So there it is. And then what I can now do is I can actually start querying data based off that. So I can say query dot where I, I dot um, uh, contributors equals and uh, Contains, yeah, contains is ironable. Okay, so uh, contains. Um, so I'm going to pass in a I contributor, which is a type that I already specified in the past. Um, it is just a title. So I'm actually going to have to return an ID as well. And I'm not sure if it will work, but ID. She let's turn this as a GUID so we don't have to deal with converting or anything like that. So this is an interface. So save that. And then we'll pass in a contributor to the get articles. And then we'll pass the contributor dot ID into that. And then lastly, uh, once you basically do a bunch of Lucene uh, Lambda expressions to do a link to um, Lucene, uh, or whatever search provider you have, you're basically going to start returning those results. So, uh, our results equals query dot get results. That would work. Um, might be missing a. Uh, So yeah, I was just missing uh, some using statements up here at the top. So now it's returning a uh, search results collection of article search item. So now 
kind of you have you're you're returning a search item or you're turning uh, article items from those CN index. They're not actual Sitecore items at this point. They're actually just um, documents from the Lucene index. So the next step is is turning that into um, actual art article items. So I can do it if results dot. Let's see here. If I could do a total search results is greater than zero. I also probably don't want to. I want to check for null. And I can do a var data, something like that. Uh, results dot hits dot So then it's going to return the hits, which are basically contains a document and the score. Scoring is going to be can be used theoretically for sorting purposes or, or things like that. Um, obviously, setting this to data is a pretty uh, pretty uh, not the greatest use. Um, let's give this a better name. Uh, result set. And then I'm going to do um, equals new list of i article. And then I'm going to for each the r document. Uh, let's do a select on this. Then this just contains an I new rule of I article search data. And then item dot, and then you'll see it actually contains a lot of those uh, items from before. Um, but it also contains a get item. Which is basically something you can call to get the site core item. Now, if you're using glass, what you can do is you can do a uh, let's yeah let's do a var context. Uh, that's not going to be a good one. Site uh, site core context new site core service. Let's just do a site core service instead of a site core context. So service I have to pass in a database, I believe. And we can just pass in sitecore.context.database in here. So now I can do service dot um, it's create type, and then I just pass in a get item, which will be item dot get item, um, and that's going to build a. Basically, it's going to return a i article for that. So what I'm going to do is also result set dot add. Actually, what I'm going to do is these these uh, variables are not very well named. I will admit admit that. But var item, I'll actually give this a type I article item equals, and then I will. It's always a good idea to do proper nail checking inside your code. So this is kind of what I'm doing. If item, actually, that's a I have item here. Result item, and I can just do if result item doesn't equal null, and then I can just return that or set that to the result 
set. Voila. Um, and now I'm going to return result set. And the rest, I'm just going to return null. Not the prettiest. Um, typically, what I would do is you're, if you wrote it like this every time, you'd end up with a bunch of duplicate code. Um, and I try to follow dry as much as possible. Don't repeat yourself. Basically, a very simple principle. But uh, you could, um, you know, abstract some of this logic that I have here, uh, where, where I'm doing results.hits and turn this into. Um, different types of items and you know moving the data around etc a lot of this could be standardized and and put into one place um, but I was just writing this on the fly um, another thing I would like to do to the result set before I return it is I would also like to um, I would like to Pass dot contains, and then I, what I'd like to do is pass in a um, ID to a start path. And then I would just say start path. So I'm going to try to pull in all items that have a contributor that is matches the one I passed through, and then it's gonna all ones that have a start path to that contains that. Actually, I probably should do starts with. Uh, um, yeah, contains should be fine. Um, I, I, I don't really want to do string comparison because that kind of opens up wall card searching. And I don't want to really want to go down that path. So that's that. Uh, let's now we can go back to our article controller. And here again, uh, I'm gonna just new up the uh, concrete implementation. But typically, if you had article controller and you had unit testing in place, you'd actually want to have a uh, constructor where you uh, you pass your dependencies in, which you're you're your controller is going to depend on your uh, concrete implementation. Well, at this point, it's a concrete implementation of your repository. Typically, you would have a interface for your repository. So you, all your code or would technically depend on or use the interface, not the the concrete implementation uh, article repository. Um, since since we have just a concrete implementation and we aren't uh, working with unit testing, we're just going to use um, the uh, the concrete. So our article repo, article repo equals new article repository. I don't know if I've linked these projects up, so this might not work. Oh, yeah, there it is. And then. Um, and then uh, I'm going to turn a I enumerable uh, I article results, and it's going to be article repository uh, get articles, and I'm going to deal with that in a second. If results does not equal null, and results uh, any, then I will return. A current view of results. I'm going to have to update the um, so I'm just doing this for testing purposes, but our contributor equals new contributor. Um, for our contributor, I'm going to use Sitecore context. 
dot get item. And I'm just going to have to pass in a good, which I'll get there in a second. Um, and then uh, the path um, we're passing in as an ID. So let's go back to Sitecore. Uh, so I'll pull in this guy. And then, so that would be contributor. And let's do a var root path. Sitecore.context.site. That root. I can do a site uh, Sitecore.context.item. time since I worked with the item API. Um, so this context database get item. I think it can take a path which is what root path is. Said it's been a while. Um, and then root path ID. Not sure if that's going to work perfectly. Might have gotten some of that wrong. So, okay. So that's that. Uh, let's go over the listings. This is the wrong type. So this is going to be an ironable uh, I article. And uh, so model dot intelligence isn't working. But uh, let's just do model dot this won't exist anymore the old stuff right here. So if model does not equal null, and then we'll just do a model of that. And this doesn't have a value anymore. So let's just see how this runs. And let's go to Canito real quick. I believe list is being pulled into the home page. And we might not be returning any data because that contributor I picked might not have any data assigned to him. So we'll see what we get back and then we'll make some adjustments from there. So I'm getting back an, an item of test article. Let's see where this is coming in. Coming in there, let's see. Let's make sure the PLID is set correctly. Because it's being pulled into the six by six on the left side. So let's just see if that is configured to be the listing component. It is, it looks like. Yep. So it looks like it's being, it's pulling in possibly from there. So let's do a, just to see this in action is we're going to go to the article controller and we're going to set a breakpoint. And then I'm going to actually attach to that. I'll, I'll make sure that show processes from all users is selected or else you're not going to see the W3P here down here. 
I'm not sure which one this is. Just run this top one. Hopefully that's the correct one. Um, it's saying that it's can break point. If this turns uh, like a filled in red dot, it means that you it didn't it won't hit the break point. So we'll run refresh. Okay, it's hit the break point, and then we'll just step through real quick. So it's it's finding the contributor. It's Dylan Young. Title is Dylan Young, and the ID is this. Uh, the root path for this is example site. Root path was uh, site core slash content slash example site. And then I'm going to go and step into the get articles. And unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see a whole lot going on here, but once you get results, now results contains a total search results of one. And it shows a hits here. Let me uh, go into it a little bit further. Now date contains the search result item, uh, which is this name test article template name article etc and it shows all of their fields just like that um, and it's pretty much saying that it's working because now this should be able to populate because it's going to loop through and as it loops through it's going to create this this result item as a glass item and it's filling it in and now it's adding it to a result set there was only one so that's what it returns result set is not null and that's what it returns so that's it uh, that's working with Lucene um, there is, a, you can take this a lot further. Um, this is a very basic example of some of the Lucene or more importantly, the content search API. Um, so going from here, now we can start looking into, um, I'm gonna actually go into some of the caching stuff uh, here soon on this example, um, but I'm also going to show computed fields and how to uh, do more complex searches and maybe standardize this a little bit. Uh, maybe show a, a session on just refactoring this code, how you can make it more efficient, how you can make it a little cleaner, and uh, you know, maybe build some sort of repository um, to handle this. Um, I, I, we've glanced over, I used a lot of concrete implementations, but I'd like to also do a session on uh, unit testing of this as well. So. Um, let me know what you think of this, this tutorial. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me as usual. Um, all right. Have a good evening.